Dear Robert, I hope you feel better, but if you don't, we'll have fun anyway. You can even play Dear Antonio, dollhouse. I hope you get well soon. I miss the good times playing with no, you. I especially anyway. miss playing in the you water. You can even play with my dollhouse. When you're better, we can go to the zoo and get ice cream, too. And I see you, can you. Make you did that. I miss you saying my name and crying at the bus so stop much. when I go to school. You I will love. have fun with God and the angels and will never be sick again. I love you. From Quinn. I have a special hug for you, Robert, and a special kiss. Love, Addie. Mackenzie was diagnosed with a malignant brain tumor in July of 2000. In December of 2000, um, we, we found out that the treatments that we were doing were not working and that we needed to get Mackenzie ready for um, the next place that she was going. So we brought her home with the WINGS program. The second day that we were at home with Mackenzie, JJ came and um, met with Taylor, which was really nice because we were having a lot of things that we needed to do and it was someone just for her. And they immediately, they just got along wonderfully. And Taylor had a very high comfort level with her. And then JJ continued to come in weekly and work with Taylor and then would explain to me what they had done so I would know the ground that had been covered just in case Taylor would have questions for me as well. What hospice does for uh, patients and their families is it really helps make the dying process at home a normal part of life um, and accentuates and builds on the fact that dying is a natural part of life. It's, it's kind of like a um, um, wellness approach to dying because the patient can be at home with the family members they love, their um, friends, extended family, church neighbor, whoever, can be much more part of their lives at a time in their lives when um, they really need people to be with them. I can't imagine any work that's more important for me than doing work with people who are at the end stages of their life and their families because I believe passionately that we need to honor that part of our lives as much as we honor the beginning part of our lives. I believe that families are like mobiles and so when they're connected what happens in one part of the family undoubtedly makes an impact on another part of the family. So if, if one person is ill, then the rest of the family experiences a lot of emotions that go along with the changes and with the illness. And, and if one part of the family is, is sad, then other people in the family experience that as well. And if there's somebody who's angry, whether the rest of the family recognizes or not, they're usually going to be affected by the anger as well. And so I think when we find a way to address the thoughts and emotions, in all of the different family members were making an impact on the whole system, including the patient. It's so important for children to have a chance to express themselves in ways other than simply verbal communication because there's just limits to their ability to really communicate what's going on inside and even to understand at a conscious level how they really feel or how they are, you know, what their thoughts really are. And using art or clay or drawing or puppets or dolls or storytelling really helps them, you know, to understand what's going on inside of them. After Mackenzie passed away in January, Taylor had her first um, therapy session with JJ after we had lost Mackenzie. And 
JJ really stressed the importance to Taylor about keeping a journal or a book that whenever she had any kind of feeling, good, bad, whatever, that she could go to that book and she could draw. And she really emphasized that because at that time Taylor could write, but maybe not to the level that she would need to to really get her feelings out. So after we got back from the session, Taylor just went crazy with drawing pictures. I mean, just drew them everywhere. And then she asked me for tape and she went around and she hung them on all of our windows facing out. And hers, I was not really sure what she was doing at the time. And then she explained to me that she was showing Mackenzie all the pictures she had drawn. I wish I was humongous because I could look at my sister up in heaven and I could let my mom Dear see Dear Mom, too. I want to know what heaven feels like. Is it nice? Is it bad? I want to know what God looks like. I hope he's really nice to you. And I hope he's nice to me, too. I'm going to become good friends with God. The most rewarding aspect of my job in hospice is to be able to witness and sometimes even participate in a small way in a child or a family being able to find the medium or find the words to say what needs to be said, whether it's I love you or I will miss you or these are the things that, that have been wonderful about my life with you or I'm worried or I'm scared or it's okay, it's okay to go, I'll be okay. And to me, to be able to help families finish that circle, to finish what they need to finish before the death occurs is an incredible gift. I feel that hospice work is privileged work and I'm honored to be able to do it. I remember the things you liked, chocolates, my stupid little poems that I'd sing, red roses, that's all I can think of for now. I love you, Mom, love Peter. I don't know what it is like in heaven, but I hope that you like it there and have fun with Otto and Grandma. Love from Katie. This work can be incredibly joyful amidst all the tragedy and the sadness. And I find these people that we work with just incredible people who are different than most of us. You know, the children who are sick, or who are dying, are very special children. They have courage and determination and wisdom and a sense of spirit that is just awesome. And it's an honor to be with them and to know them. And the same goes often for their families, for their siblings and their parents and the courage we see in the whole family as they get through this is, is very powerful. If there was such a thing, you would get the award for best mother in the universe. I love you so, so much and I will never stop loving you. If it wasn't for Wings, Taylor would not be able to get this artistic therapy. Um, Insurance does not recognize bereavement therapy, and there's no way that I would be able to afford this for her. And it has been everything in getting us both past this. I watched one child hurt. There's no way I could have watched her hurt from losing Mackenzie. And this therapy has gotten us to a point where we can sit here and talk to you about this and, and feel okay and not start crying and getting really upset, and that's a huge thing. A lot of these families, you know, these terminal illness kiddos, they, you know, it, it doesn't know any money. And there's a lot of families whose kids would suffer huge after this if it wasn't for the wing staff saying, this is what these families need and they're gonna get it. You can.